Hello, my name is Eddie Tofbeck. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here's your weekly technical analysis of Kansas City and Minneapolis wheat markets. Kansas City wheat. The low water mark of the 18th of August last year was pivotal to the construction of what happened next in this market. Back then the market failed to break down through the neckline, currently 831, which is highlighted in bright red on my daily chart of the small but so highly influential October 2021 to January 2022 head and shoulders top. Please bear this neckline in mind as it will crop up again later on. Anyway, the market chose back then to construct a new pattern, a bull channel, and prices moved up and penetrated the 957 area, the gateway to a congestion area between 957 to 1001. Prices rose within this area, this zonal area pushing up over the long moving average currently at 966 plus a lot of this congestion was old and had been made up from 2011 and 2012 uh, and was thus easily breached on the way up in February and on the way down in June. However, back in those days the congestion did not have the additional reinforcement of the long moving average within its midst and it is this reinforcement along the original upper bull channel line that constrained the rise in early October. In the process, the market took on a new shape, primarily caused by the weekly key reversal down made that same week. At the end of that week in October, the market broke down through the lower bull channel line, also dropping out of this overhead resistance area, moving below the medium moving average, currently 9.08. In very early November, a choice came about for this market. This is a parallel to what we saw in Chicago and wheat future, uh, Chicago wheat futures, and I'll expand on that shortly. But first, much like Chicago wheat, though it's not a complete duplicate of Chicago wheat, this market had two avenues. Here is in Chicago wheat, the market chose what I described in my commentary from a few weeks ago thus, and I quote, the straightforward move down with potential targets for the break of the bull channel. Thus, we have a primary target X down in the 903 zone, whilst the secondary hard to reach target X1 is way down below in the 759 zone. End of quote. In late November, the bearish pressure pressing of the market finally started to show results with prices reaching the primary target at 903. The market continued lower, all the way down through the 50% Fibonacci line of the August 20 to May 21 move at 900, the 50% Fibonacci line of the September 2019 to May 22 move at 881, the 2013 high at 20, 862, the 2014 high at 855. And but by then, prices hit the big red trend line once again of the neckline of that small but influential October 21 to January 22 head and shoulder stop. This is the one I asked you earlier to bear in mind. And so things stopped. Prices even rose a bit up into the congestion between 855 to 881 including the 2013 and 2014 highs, as well as the 50% Fibonacci line at 881, but the rise was tempered and eroded by these resistances, and prices kept dipping back down to the red neckline below, as recently as the start of this week. The neckline held, but was breached a number of times, and this is where the added support of the low of August last year at 808 kicked in and turned the market back up at the end of last week, and the start of this week. As I said last week, and I quote, with all this activity, it has become evident that we are in a two steps down and one step up cycle at the moment. And yesterday, the market was again testing the red neckline with a bearish closing black marabozo. End of quote. However, some things have happened or are about to happen this week. First off, yesterday, the market broke higher through the five pointer bright green downtrend from October, and that's currently A43 just as it was about to run out of room with the red neckline. Prices have obviously gotten stuck with the 855 to 881 congestion area as well as having the short medium moving average currently 868 bearing down from above. Yet that was not all. You see the excessive activity this week has set up the conditions for a potential weekly key reversal. If we close tonight, either over 842 or under 841, which is a fantastically narrow range. If we close outside of these, then we're beyond. Right now, we are looking at a weekly key reversal up. The questions and observations I now have going forward are these. 
Will target X1 in the 759 zone below, will it still be temptation enough for a move lower? Alternatively, will the market base out here and start a move higher and possibly make the mid-June today action, maybe even the mid, the, the May today action into a very large double bottom pattern? I'd look to the 50% Fibonacci lines overhead and the medium moving average to be the first line of defense in any such attempt. Minneapolis Wheat. <clears throat> Back in early September last year, there was the start of a new bullish pattern, a bull channel come ascending expanding wedge pattern that I highlighted in dark blue here on my daily chart. This rise seems to have been slower here than in the other grain markets. In early October, the market broke down through the lower trend line of this bull channel come ascending expanding wedge pattern, leaving us with the same choices that we've seen in both Chicago and Kansas City. The market chose a straightforward move lower with potential targets. Thus, we had a primary target below, quite a way lower compared to the other grain markets in the 883 zone, with a secondary harder reach target X1 down in the 840 zone. Eventually, actually this past Monday, the market managed to reach the primary target before shooting back upwards for the rest of this week. And I will have something to say about this shortly, about all this as well, the shooting up. Before that, I'd like to look back to the market's construction since early October last year of a bear channel, currently 826 to 911, which is highlighted in bright red on my daily chart. This bear channel has been gradually squishing the market lower. However, I said last week, and I quote, the upper bear channel line is at the least a three pointer. It seems we shall see something give way and soon. This brings me to a question I posed four weeks ago, which is now five weeks ago, and which is still valid question. Is there the possibility for the whole of the July today action, possibly even the action from June today, to be a very large double bottom? It will very much depend, I suspect, on whether the market will drop down to target X. This was the primary target uh, that I've already achieved, been achieved in the 840 zone. And what it will do once it manages to get there. But it will become a more significant question as the weeks go on. End of quote. So I'll now deal with the things well, deal with this week's actions, as they are quite important. You see, we saw yesterday prices breach the upper bear channel trend line, currently 9.11, though not close over it. Indeed, the cap was slowly declining, well, the cap was actually the slowly declining short medium moving average, currently at 9.21, which, along with the flatlining medium moving average, currently 9.39, provide the first line of defense on top after the upper bear channel trend line. Yeah, in action this week of reaching the primary target below and then breaching the upper bear channel line, the market has set up the conditions for a possible weekly key reversal this week. Thus, if we close tonight either over 906 or under 905, then we'd be on. This is an incredibly thin margin, but that is what it is. At this moment, we are looking at a weekly key reversal up. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and the back of this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.